Hi there everybody and welcome back to our art appreciation class. Now in this video, we will be talking about the Renaissance period. Well, basically Renaissance means rebirth or revival and it was first used during the 19th century to describe all artistic outputs produced in the 15th to 17th centuries. But if you want to trace the etymology of the word Renaissance, well, it came from the Italian word Renascita, which means rebirth. And this word was first used by Giorgio Vasari, who was an important art critic in the 1500s. He used this particular term to separate the artistic outputs produced during his time from the previous generation, which he described as ugly and roughly made. Well, Giorgio Vasari was not really a fan of Byzantine art, right? <laughs> well, to explain it further, Giorgio Vasari believes that the artistic productions during the Greek and Roman antiquity, which we call now the classical period, were all great. But he could not say the same thing for the Byzantine or the medieval period. And he even argues that artistic production and artistic quality deteriorated during the medieval times. So you might be asking, what started this particular movement? Well, we have two literary luminarchs to thank. Number one, Giovanni Boccaccio, and number two, Petrarch. These two writers revisited classical literature and in turn inspired renewed interest in classical antiquity. So I guess we can simply say that the Renaissance is the rebirth or revival of the Greek and Roman antiquity. And so in this video, we will get to know the masters who shaped the artistic landscape of the Renaissance period. Giotto di Bondone The Florentine painter Giotto is one of the most important artists in the history of Western art. A friend of the Italian poet Dante Alighieri and reputed to be a pupil of Cimabue, he was the first artist of the medieval period to approach the human figure as a sculptural mass inhabiting its own space. His work displays a complex language of communication and for the first time portrays the real emotions of its subjects. Jan van Eyck The early Flemish school's greatest artist, Jan van Eyck, was responsible for the spread of the international Gothic style. Some believe he invented oil painting because of his advanced use of the medium. In fact, this technique had been known since antiquity, but van Eyck used it as never before to portray sensational lighting effects of great clarity and realism. Donatello A sculptor in marble and bronze, Donatello was the most influential artist of the early 1400s. Despite the prevailing popularity of the international Gothic style, Donatello created figures of strength and psychological tension, disregarding the surface finish of a sculpture in order to achieve the correct visual effects of light and shade. The elongated bronze figure of David was influenced by a classical concern for anatomy and is thought to be the first nude freestanding figure made since classical antiquity. Sandro Botticelli Sandro Botticelli was one of the greatest and most popular Italian masters of the late 15th century. In 1481, he was called to Rome to paint part of the Sistine Chapel. Returning to Florence in 1484, his style became harsher and he withdrew from public life to illustrate Dante Alighieri's Inferno. During his lifetime, Botticelli's style was viewed as archaic, especially in comparison with other Renaissance artists such as Leonardo da Vinci, Raphael, and Michelangelo. Leonardo da Vinci Leonardo was a formidable genius who with Michelangelo and Raphael shaped and accelerated the great changes that took place in the period known as the High Renaissance. 
Born in 1452 in Tuscany, Leonardo was apprenticed to the sculptor Andrea del Verrocchio. From 1482, he worked at the court of Milan, not solely as an artist, for he possessed great skills and knowledge in many areas. He was a talented scientific investigator, engineer, architect, and designer. Leonardo pioneered many new artistic techniques that were later copied and developed by his contemporaries. One such technique was sfumato, meaning to give the appearance of imperceptible changes in gradation of light. This technique was employed in the Mona Lisa, arguably the most famous painting in the history of Western art. Michelangelo Michelangelo was born in Caprese and was apprenticed to the Florentine master Domenico Ghirlandaio. His talents were soon recognized by Lorenzo de' Medici who took the young artist into his home. While with the Medici family, Michelangelo was able to study their impressive collection of classical antiquities. Such studies clearly had a great impact on his work from the very beginning. Michelangelo's greatest interest lay in sculpture, but it was the series of fresco paintings he carried out on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel that ultimately solidified his fame. Michelangelo was also a creative architect and a talented poet. He was an extremely pious man who never married, living meagerly in Rome until his death in the year 1564. Raphael Born in Urbino, Raphael was a son of a painter. He showed artistic talent from a very young age, and at 17, he was studying with the master Perugino. In 1508, Raphael was summoned to Rome by the Pope, who commissioned him to decorate the private papal rooms of the Sistine Chapel. Concurrently, Michelangelo was working on the ceiling of the chapel. The School of Athens was painted at the Stanza della Signatura at the Vatican. In this painting, Raphael's perfect rendering of the harmonious balance attempted in earlier classical art holds the key to its importance during and even after the High Renaissance.